located in Kigali, Rwanda, the sub-regional office for Eastern Africa of the UN Economic Commission for Africa serves 14 countries and regional economic communities. It provides support to member states and organizations, gives advisory services, and contributes to promote regional integration, economic and social transformation. Andrew Mould is the acting director of ECA in Eastern Africa. We were asked this year by our Executive Secretary to uh, identify an area of specialisation for our office and our office, it was very clear where we needed to provide support that was uh, in terms of uh, implementation of the continental free trade area. 2018 was a very exciting year for our office. The CFTA, the continental free trade area, was signed in Kigali and uh, because ECA has been working on the CFTA for the last two decades, maybe we've been pushing for the CFTA, so this was a very exciting moment for us to see it finally signed in Kigali. The CFTA is going to cover a market of 1.2 billion people. So for member states, this creates both opportunities and challenges. One of the fundamental arguments in favour of the AFCTA is currently there's a lot of uncertainty in the global economy, particularly regarding trade. And we see a situation whereby over the last 50, 60 years, African countries have been trying to increase their exports to the high income countries. Now, they've done this with preferential market access agreements, but it generally hasn't been successful in terms of helping to diversify our economies. I think at a juncture like this, it's a very good time for Africa to look at the potential within its own regional and domestic markets. And that's why we are so enthusiastic about the African continental free trade area. While working towards the implementation of the AFCFTA, it remains important to put women and young people at the center of the debate to ensure that indeed no one is left behind. You will recall during the signing of the um, AFCFTA here in Kigali, what came up um, and what was surprising is that 44 countries then signed up to the AFCFTA, but then 50% of African countries signed the agreement on free movement of persons, which goes to say that countries are interested in trade, but they are still somehow reticent to allow um, citizens to, to move. But studies have shown that um, there's perhaps um, something to be gained because opening up borders does not mean that they are opening up borders to semi-skilled workers, to unskilled workers. Trying to shut the door to these groups of people automatically means that the continent is shutting doors to skilled professionals as well. So some regulation of some kind would be needed. The office works on several special initiatives in relationship with member states, energy, tourism and the blue economy. The blue economy policy framework offers an excellent entry point towards the African continental free trade area. Why? Because of the crucial role that inland waterways and lake ports can play in terms of boosting intra-regional trade and further improving the linkages between the landlocked countries and the seaports of the region. The African Union has identified tourism as a key priority sector uh, for the African continent. And obviously the, uh, the free, uh, continental free trade area is important for tourism in the sense that it will open up the African continent. Now one of the targets for the African Union is to increase the GDP contribution by 100% by 2023. So we're looking at uh, upwards of uh, 300 billion US dollars in terms of tourism contribution to the African economy. They're looking at regional intra-Africa intra tourism. That should be doubled again by 2023. So the CFTA obviously will play a key role in that in terms of facilitating the movement of people within the African continent. Once member states open up their borders, then that, that makes it easier for people to travel. Once you have uh, the system in place, uh, the protocols in place, to have a free continental market allowing free movement of goods, free movement of people, free movement of finance, and so on and so forth. A lot of that integration is going to rely on infrastructure, uh, including banking system, including information technology, but also including energy infrastructure, how to integrate regionally our oil and gas uh, network of systems, how to integrate our electricity system regionally. 
we rely on how fast we bridge the infrastructure gap in Africa and also particularly in the context of Eastern Africa as well. The sub-regional office is now calling its 22nd annual meeting, the Intergovernmental Committee of Experts, to discuss first the work of the organization and more specifically the way forward for the EFCFTA implementation. At ECA, historically, we've always been very supportive of Pan-African integration and uh, greater trade and investment amongst member states. So I think the meeting will be important to flesh out some of those uh, potential implications for the region. And as I said, come to a common understanding of what it means and how do we move forward from there. There is an enormous amount of work to do in the region in terms of research and policy support. Um, I think events like this uh, Intergovernmental Committee of Experts group meeting will give us a chance to showcase some of that work, but also get a lot of feedback from the participants and, and uh, listen to them about their concerns and what areas they think we should be working more in. So I'm very much looking forward to the, the outcome of this next uh, ICE meeting here in Kigali. Mm -hmm.